Hello there, thank you for staying with us and welcome to another edition of Channels Beam right here on Channels Television. I'm Victor Mathias. Now, the ban by major tech companies placed on President Donald Trump in the wake of the Capitol riots has raised concerns as to the powers these companies wield, be it as a publishing platform or a platform where free speech is allowed and encouraged. While that debate was going on, one of these platforms updated its user policy, saying that by February the 8th, 2021, one, its users must accept some new terms and privacy policies or stand losing access to their accounts. This has also stirred up the hornet's nest and has led to calls for the boycott of the platform, which has about 2.5 billion users globally. This will be our focus on the program today, and we will also be looking at the rise and fall of cryptocurrencies in the past week. But let's first see what got online peeps talking in the past week. The world watched in disbelief as pro-Trump protesters stormed the U.S. Capitol and disrupted a sitting where lawmakers inside debated counting electoral college votes confirming Joe Biden's victory at the 2020 U.S. presidential elections. Throngs of people pushed past police who were trying to block them from entering the building but later were able to breach security and successfully entered the building where one person was shot and later died. Applicants for the National Identity Number, NIN, have continued to complain over the slow process of obtaining the number, which is now necessary for SIM card registration and updates. Some have equally alleged that rampant extortion was being perpetrated at registration centres. They, however, called on the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, and the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Dr. Isa Pantami to intervene in order to bring sanity to the system. Well, there you go. Those were the trends in the past week where you can be a part of the conversation from wherever you're watching around the world. Just tweet at us at ChannelsBeam or ChannelsTV at Victor underscore MBIDI. You can also use the hashtag ChannelsBeam as well as the hashtag Big Tech. But joining us today to look at these topics, topics that I have spoken about um, earlier on, we have Buddy Roberts. He is the co-founder of Daytalium, a technology education company that provides value-packed premium digital skill sets for the future of work. He joins us right here in our studio in Lagos. Well, um, Buddy, it's a pleasure to have you today on the program. Thank you for having me on the talk. Of course. We also have joining us um, via Skype, Bamishai Victor. He is a Nigerian medical doctor, an author, and a social political analyst. Victor is dedicated to a life of service that will positively transform both local and global paradigms. He joins us from Warsaw in Poland via Zoom. Um, it's a pleasure to have you join us on the program today, um, Dr. Victor. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Indeed. Well, but it kicks out the conversation for us. I mean, big tech companies seem to be having or wielding some form of power um, over people who, are, who have pretty much over the years now relied on this platform to uh, maybe socialize, disseminate information, and just pass the message. Are they being too powerful? Um, okay, so for me, I think um, it's, it's the right thing to do like um, putting some form of restrictions on how you make its speeches on the internet because the uh, internet has, especially the big tech firms like um, the, um, the, Google, the Amazon, the Facebook, the Twitter, they have about billions of users on that platform. So it's more like a social room where you need to actually put some edge to what you, you're saying online, do you understand? So I think they are making the right um, move in putting some kind of um, check checks in what you're saying online. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but some would say that that's stifling free speech, which is like one of the, uh, what I say, one of the um, the major bedrock of um, uh, democracy. 
Yes, yes. So, so I mean, do you believe that they're stifling check, uh, free speech with what okay, they're doing? Okay, so for me, I believe it's kind of um, dicey. Yeah. Because yeah, as, uh, as a human being, you have your free rights to speak. You have your, your right to um, voice your views and opinions as, as you like. But also, we also need to put to the fact that hate speeches could um, affect Negatively, yeah. That's that's them. So, but I feel if you can come into a balance of how um, these um, checks could be put in place, it will add more value to the um, social media world. Yeah. So, in terms that's in terms of conversation and also in terms of conduct. Uh, but let's uh, head over to Warsaw, where uh, Victor Bamishai is joining us. Uh, Victor, what's your take on this? Do you think the big tech companies are becoming too powerful? Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, the concept would always be anyone who provides a platform uh, is as powerful as the, as the control he has over that platform. And again, uh, the context of the discussion borders on freedom, and the question would be how free is freedom? You see, with freedom comes responsibility and certain borders. And so as much as every individual could have the uh, ability or could have the freedom to speak, uh, that does not necessarily translate to freedom of reach. And so if you would not be taking responsibility to make sure your speech is not inflammatory, uh, the uh, tech providers, the platform providers would argue that they have the responsibility to make sure that they do not give you the reach uh, to, you know, to poison uh, the society or the environment. So uh, consequentially, that would mean that while they are not stopping you from saying what you want to say, they are saying, no, not on our platform. And there are rules that you signed on to when you join that platform. So when you go against that, uh, those who provide the platform could say, you know, you've gone against our laws, you've gone against our rules. Uh, we are not saying you cannot say what you want to say, but you just cannot make use of our platform. So eventually, where the right of one injures the right of many, uh, the right of one would have to give way uh, in the view of these platform providers. Uh, all right. So, um, again, uh, like you said, I mean, with uh, freedom comes responsibility. Uh, but people have pretty much um, uh, gone against or they've taken that responsibility, you know, for, for, for granted. Because, I mean, it's social media and people just think that it's just this um, place where you just post trivial updates. And But it seems things are becoming um, a lot more difficult and tighter. And perhaps that's why we're having all of these restrictions coming into place. But moving forward... Uh, especially in terms of the governance of the internet um, and also um, laws that uh, people can actually run to when they feel that uh, s some wrong has been done to them. Uh, how effective would you say these laws are, uh, not only in Nigeria and I or Africa, but gl on a global scale? Yeah, I would say that uh, uh, certain countries have certain laws that govern the web, and probably the web right now is the most difficult place to govern. But however, um, there, 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 there has to be things that are done because people certainly feel that they are untouchable on the web. And these things are not just on the web, they affect everyday life. You know, people lose their lives because of inflammatory uh, statements that are made online. Threats are being made to people's life online. And so every country would definitely have to make laws. But within, like I said, what is within the purview of these platform providers now, they can all they can do is their best to regulate until that time uh, we uh, governments can you know, bring out laws uh, that may be able to regulate this. But until then, you still have to you know conform to the terms and conditions you signed on to when you join those platforms. All right, I'll come back to you in just a minute, but uh, buddy, let me come back to you now. Okay. Um, talking about terms and conditions, so, so um, there's this um, terms, terms and conditions that you know this certain uh, um, social media platform has said that if people don't accept it, I mean, it's take it or leave it, so to speak. Now, this is supposed to be like a free world, so to speak. So you're forcing something down the throats of people, and you're saying if you don't take it, you lose access. But one of the major reasons why people are pretty much having this opera is the privacy of their data. Yes. Um, do we even have privacy laws, data privacy laws that will maybe would have put this uh, company in check? Okay, so um, I'm very much familiar about the um, UK and the European um, Union. Uh, the they GDPR. Have, yes, yes, yes. So they have laws that govern um, private data 
privacy mm. in their um, segments and countries. But as for other parts, uh, parts, so I believe that these laws are not really strong. Effective. Yes, yes. They're not really strong. So I believe that um, most countries and government should actually come together and uh, put these companies in check. Yeah, yeah. So, but, but I mean, so if if they now, I'm just thinking. Even yeah. If they violate my privacy or they they take my data, what is the possible thing they can use that data for? Okay. So, with the likes of these current companies that we've heard about, I believe that for this case, our messages, our um, contacts are safe because they are not really being exposed. But um, when f um, Facebook. But WhatsApp in 2016, yeah. they've been sharing uh, data, data, yeah. right? So um, it's not new. It's not new. It's just it's just that right now people are now more um, aware. Aware. Do you understand? So um, the effect is just maybe um, knowing that it's just you have these um, companies having access to your phone number, to your phone number, to your um, number of logs and and the like. So um, to me. I think the effect is not as as um, as risky as people 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 yes, see it. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Well, well, Victor, do you, do you believe that the effects of uh, these data being out there for sister companies or uh, sort of Facebook and, and WhatsApp, do you think that our data being out there for them isn't as risky as people are fearing? Ah, uh, well, that is uh, dicey because the whole idea of data is uh, because of the wealth that is in it. And so countries understand the power and the wealth in data, and that's why they are trying to protect it. So uh, for WhatsApp, WhatsApp, as it used to be, could have been respecting the laws of certain countries, you know, by not exporting outside. But Facebook is a uh, bigger, which is the parent company, is a bigger company, probably that of the U.S., and so may not be necessarily following uh, the European laws or probably Indian laws or Nigerian laws. And so that's why... That's where the, that problem comes up. Ordinarily, you would say it doesn't make little difference except for advertising, you see, and probably uh, the, all of the fears that people have always had before, either founded or unfounded. But in real sense, it has not made uh, much difference to my understanding. Uh, okay, um, so pretty much um, uh, that's one of the concerns, you know, if, you know, you have um, laws here and there and, you know, they respect some in some countries and you don't respect uh, some in other countries, um, isn't that a problem, Victor? I didn't get you. Oh, I'm saying that, like you said, you know, they respect these laws in some countries. Like in Europe, uh, we've seen that uh, there's actually been some fines for some of those big tech companies, um, which is because in some instances, they respect the laws in some countries, and in some countries, they don't. Uh, how do we get them to respect the laws, if we have any, in every part of the world? Well, for every product... Uh, um provider or service provider, they understand what what market means. So, and uh, the market potential, for instance, in Nigeria is so huge, uh, big services would not like to lose that. So uh, that becomes our leverage to make them obey our laws because, you know, uh, for, for service providers, uh, for them it's about the number of people using their services and that's what, uh, they, that's what they, they consider the spread as their success. So. Nigeria, as a big market, must be able to leverage on that to make them, you know, obey uh, our laws on, on media, on data. I'm not sure how much of that we have. I'm not really educated on how much uh, laws Nigeria has. And number two, Nigeria also has a problem with having laws but never implementing them. So uh, those, those two are still a problem for me in, in that regard. But in any case, because we are a big market, they may be forced to, you know, come to the table and then respect whatever laws we want to implement. Well, let's hope um, they do come to the table and respect any law, and hopefully um, the fears that Nigerians and even many other uh, users of these platforms have will be um, allayed as time goes on. But I have to say thank you, Victor Bamishai, for joining us on the program today. I will take a quick break, and we'll be back in a moment to look at a different um, aspect entirely. Please stay with us. 
Thank you for staying with us. Now we would switch lanes and, of course, talk about something which has caught the attention of people, especially those on the online space. You can also uh, be part of that conversation. Uh, you can join us again uh, by tweeting at Channels Beam at Channels TV at Victor underscore MBIDI using the hashtag Channels Beam as well as Crypto Trade. And joining us to look at this is Bolaji Onibudo. He is the founder and CEO of Zenbit Digital Transaction Services Limited, where he leads and motivates the core team in engaging service providers and directing key resources towards desired results. Bolaji joins us via Zoom from Victoria Island in Lagos. Bolaji, it's a pleasure to have you on the program today. Good afternoon, uh, Victor. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys. Indeed, indeed. So, I mean, um, the market has pretty much been up and down in the past, um, or to use now the business term, uh, it's been bearish um, in the past few days. What's actually going on um, in the cryptocurrency market at the moment? Um, that's very true. Um, uh, you know, just before the Christmas and New Year, uh, there was a high demand and interest for uh, Bitcoin, which was um, uh, sort of like uh, uh, led by institutional investors. Uh, so a number of institutions, mostly in the U.S., are buying into and investing into Bitcoins. Uh, so that has driven the price up, uh, and there's been a lot of positive activity. Uh, the uh, advent of uh, decentralized finance, uh, known as DeFi um, protocols, which are new decentralized applications on block, blockchain uh, platforms like Ethereum. Those were already gaining a lot of uh, uh, interest, you know, providing loans, savings, and uh, new schemes like staking, where people can actually not only uh, buy Bitcoin or Ethereum or some of the other alternative coins, but now you can earn interest, uh, you know, sort of APY uh, on those assets as well. So that's driving a lot of demand. And, and obviously that led to, uh, that coupled with the institutional interest and a number of um, uh, news uh, uh, events like uh, now US banks can offer custod custodian services for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, as well as US banks can also now integrate with uh, blockchain networks to sort of facilitate payments uh, between clients. So, so that is driving a lot of um, you know, interest in the space and uh, re regulation is getting clearer and clearer. Here in Nigeria, the Nigerian Security and Exchange Commission has also um, uh, uh, you know, fixed, uh, uh, published a, um, a position, a formal position for the federal government on cryptocurrency and blockchain, digital assets, and so on. So uh, the demand was there. The price went up. Uh, all all, all new um, all time new eyes were set from twenty thousand to forty one thousand uh, three four hundred thereabouts. But uh, of course, whenever you have a bull run like that, there will be some consolidation. Some people would take profit. You know, people that have been there for weeks and years and months, they would take profit and you start to see a lot of buy. And then, of course, there's the psychology play. If uh, the price remains in one area for, uh, you know, well over a week or several days and there is some resistance, you know, then you, so, you so start to see more people selling. Yeah, so let me quickly just, just just coming as it is now. What would you advise people to do? Because, like you said, um, there's going to be some profit taking um, at this point in time, and and but but also for people who just want to um, go in, uh, what should they be doing? What should they be looking at? Uh, what graph should they be looking at? Because, like you said, the SEC here in Nigeria has made a clear um, statement on, in terms of policy and regulation. Uh, so it means it's going to excite Nigerians because one of the reasons that people were kind of skeptical was because they weren't sure about the regulations here in Nigeria. But now that you said the SEC has actually made pronouncements and statements, uh, for those newcomers, uh, what should they be looking at if they indeed want to invest um, in cryptocurrency? Quickly, as we round up. So, so now that there is a clearer uh, uh, regulatory position, uh, and now uh, Bitcoin and other digital assets are being considered... Uh, uh, you know, investment uh, securities. So people can then begin to look at who are the operators in the market that they could go to. 
perhaps uh, as they would normally go to their, you know, stock brokerage firms issuing houses to buy, they need to start identify in who are the players. And and SEC is working on that to uh, approve certain players that already uh, exist in the market that have put, uh, proved to be credible, uh, and they are reviewing some of this. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, before uh, the second quarter, we, we would see, we'll get more information about that. But there are some international players, as well as local players like ourselves, that provide uh, brokerage services at Zenbit. Uh, we also have uh, a platform online at zenbit.com that, uh, you know, would uh, give people the opportunity to get a play and, and, and start to invest. But uh, on the drop, on the recent drop, where there's a pullback in the market, where the, the price has come down a little by about 10, 15 percent this morning, yeah. uh, this was anticipated because, uh, of course, uh, after we run it, things slow down and, and there's some slight correction, as you would normally have in, uh, in the stock market as well. And, and if you look at it, really, it's um, an opportunity to buy also. So it's, uh, it's like a case of, uh, is a cup full or half empty. So some people say that, wow, I can get in now uh, when there's a small pullback and then um, potentially uh, hope that uh, it, it goes up in the, in the medium to long term. All right. So let's hope, um, you know, the, um, the, the bulls this time around, uh, you know, knock off the bears in the market and, you know, everything is all right. So that those who would going now with the potential and the hope that, you know, things will rise in the very nearest future would, of course, have the benefits of, you know, pocketing their gains. But I have to say thank you, Bola Jounibudo, um, CEO of Zenbit um, Digital Services Transactional uh, Limited. Thanks again for joining us and sharing your thoughts on this. All right. Thank you very much, uh, um, Victor. Um, always, always a pleasure. All right, then. Go back to your trade. I'm sure you left your trade to join us. <laughs> well, that's where we are. Let's uh, quickly take the most viewed videos on our YouTube channel in the past week. Dean of Bono Elders Forum giving tips on what needs to be done to end insurgents in the Northeast begins this week's top five videos in fifth place. Not allowing the other um, security agencies to take over was a minus. So you're not be able to... Up next and fourth is the assurance by the federal government that no one will be forced to take the COVID-19 vaccine, adding that the vaccine will be free when available. Government will not press you down and inject you with the vaccine. No, it's going to be voluntary, but it will be free, and it will be initially for a specific uh, group of people. So, for instance, we're going to prioritize healthcare workers, we're going to prioritize the elderly, those above the age of 60, and those with comorbidities such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, etc., because these are the people that are most likely to have severe COVID infection. <laughs> Third sports is the reaction of a Doster deputy governor after a court judgment on the certification saga of his principal. Uh, Comrade Adnan Soshomole came home boasting that he was going to do what he did in Imo. And we were asking, what did he do in Imo? And some of them were telling us that he said it was instrumental to the judgment of Imo. And I was going to do the same thing that he did in Imo in Edo. And we reminded him that. First, Edo was not Lagos during the election. And that during this judicial process too, Edo will not be Imo. And second, the denial of having a sex party by the owner of a restaurant are led to be the venue of the party comes in. When we got to the station, there he said that it was supposed to be a sex party in this house. And we told them, we don't know anything like that. There's nothing as such here. They insisted that it's somebody that would have forwarded the whole thing to them. While the advice by PDP head of digital media to President Buhari to read press statements issued by the opposition party to solve Nigeria's myriad of problems tops the charts this week as the most viewed video in the past week. Those statements are words on marble. If the president would, would subsume his pride, he has asked President Jonathan to the villa several times, he might as well take time to go through those press statements because in each one of them, there is an advisory given to him on what to do. Well, there you go. Those were the top five videos that you watched on our YouTube channel in the past week. And that's where we wrap it up 
on the program this week as well. Thank you for watching. I'm Victor Mathias.